Well, everyone, Jaw Tooth again. Got another great video for you here today. I just took a long walk. I came from that way up there. I walked four tenths of a mile where I parked my car up by the road and walked back to my friend's property. My friend Steve He's got over 40 acres near Butler, Kentucky, and it's got frontage on the railroad, CSX line. This is the piece of property I camped on, uh, I think it was last year, and we camped out two nights in a row right here. I had my tent set up right there. We want to see how many trains go through here. And there's about four or five trains on this line every 24 hours. There's the tracks right there. So this is where I camped out, and I'm gonna catch a train through here. I'm staying here until a train comes. So let's see what happens. This is a really cool spot. Go ahead and start the video, son. Here we go. All right, guess what, folks? We got a train coming right now. We got a southbound coming. I'm picking up my scanner. I've been picking up some chirping on 452.9375. So we got a southbound train. It's going to come from that direction right there. They'll be able to go up to 45 miles an hour. See the sign right there? There hasn't been a train through on this line since about 5.30 this morning. So this is the first one in the daylight. They said that they're on the number one track. I'm hearing them on the scanner. I'm hearing them on 161.370. Here they come. I hear the rumble. They're gonna say, where did this guy come from? There's no roads out here. Here they are.
There they go. They got to go through Butler and Falmouth. They got to go through what, Paris and then go down to Corbin, Kentucky. I don't know where they go after that. There you go. I can still hear them. Loud even. Wow, that was cool. I got lucky. Got a train over here. That was sweet. Thanks for watching everyone. From somewhere near Butler, Kentucky. And that was really nice coming through that cut. I love seeing that. That was really awesome. I really like this cut right here. You know, where they cut right through this hill with the track. And my friend Steve's property is on the right-hand side. So all that, all the way down through there, at least a thousand feet or so, that's my friend Steve's property. And the northbound trains can go up to 40 miles an hour and southbounds can go 45. So they can go a little bit faster that way. And Steve's property is all this over here. Now at one time, there was a track that came into here years and years ago. He had some kind of quarry over here on his property. So they used to load rock onto the trains over here. It's kind of overgrown and hard to see, but he's also got a barn back here somewhere. It's in some of my other videos. Alrighty, let's have a look at the rail too. Okay, we're gonna have a close look at the rail. Okay, hopefully these numbers show up. 132, it's 132 pounds per yard. That's the weight of the rail. Uh, RE, it's the method of curing Tennessee. They're the ones who rolled the rail, Tennessee, USA. 1948, that's when this rail was rolled right here. And one dash, that's January. Rolled in January of 1948. And all those little lines on top of the rail, that's from a rail grinder. So a rail grinder's been over this recently. They are really neat to watch. I've seen them before, but I've only seen them at night. But they really do light the sky up when they're running. There you go. Here's another spot where you can see the year, 1948. And it's actually seven dashes for July. Now where I filmed it at just a minute ago, I was on a weld. So I noticed that after I filmed it. So it looks like this is actually July of 1948 when this rail was rolled. Well, this is interesting. Here's a tie plate. You can just barely read 1942. That's when that tie plate was made. So um, I was noticing on one side of the rail, they've got older tie plates, 1942. The other side of the rail, they've got bigger tie plates that are new. There's no date that I can see on the newer tie plates, but they're a lot bigger. But wait, there's more. I'm taking the long walk out of here. This is pretty steep, long ways. There's my cooler. Got some ice, pop and water in there. And the trail goes that way. It's four tenths of a mile long. And I'm about a third of the way back. Just think, this is about the time when you hear a train coming. I gotta go running back down the hill. <laughs> but I don't think it's gonna happen. Now, I stopped over in Covington on my way over here and I filmed a train over there. So I'm gonna go ahead and tack that one on here. Check this train out that I got over in Covington on my way over here. Here we go. Hey, check this out. I'm halfway back. I just had to remember somebody asked for a shout out like a month ago and I keep forgetting. Anyways, we'll give a shout out to Brecken McKinnon 8826. Thanks for watching my videos. I'm still walking. That's the way I gotta go. Came from that way. It's a nice walk, actually. Yeah, look at this. There's some nice views on the railroad walk. Yeah, you can see way out through there. Got some trees in the way here. This is on the railroad walk. All right, here comes the train. Heard them say they were on the number two track. 
I don't know which one that is though. Casey Junction. Cars are kind of interesting looking. We got steel rail on those cars. These are empty bulkhead flat cars. Those carry lumber. They stack lumber up on both sides. They're covered in plastic. Not a real long train. Look at that big salt bin over there. That's for the road department. All right, there you go. That was pretty cool. Got a train here at KC Junction, Covington, Kentucky. I might head on out of here. I'm starting to get dogs barking at me. Not sure um, why they're barking at me. They should see people here all the time. I'm at the Ryland Tunnels right now here at Ryland, Kentucky. And this is only about, I don't know, 10, 15 miles south of Covington, Kentucky. So there's two tunnels right here. This is the main tunnel right there. See that? You can see it all the way through it if you look close there. The other tunnel is right over here. And they just took this one out of service last year. And last year they started tearing the track out. The track is still inside the tunnel, but you go on the other side of the tunnel and the track's been removed. Same with over here. You've got the track right to there. And from this point on, it's gone. They removed it through Ryland. Ryland's just down that way. So this place has kind of changed a little bit. I've got a video of a circus train on this track right here when it had the elephant cars even. Kind of a historic video now when the circus was coming to Cincinnati. Well, there you are. Ryland, Kentucky. Well, here it is, May the 10th. Just got home from filming some trains. There's Chessie all excited. Chessie! And tomorrow I'm going to be in LaGrange, Kentucky, filming some street running trains. So by the time you see this video, I will already film some street running trains with Scott, 1960 Gambit. Going to meet up with him and he's going to drive down there. He just got his car fixed. This will be a lot of fun. I can't wait. What are you going after, Chessie?
Oh, I see. There's a goose over there. Right there. That's how she does right before she gets ready to attack. She points like that. She is part Australian Shepherd. Man, is that right? Is that what it was? I guess what it was. And part Beagle. Or wait a minute, what? What is that? I keep forgetting the other half. I know half of it's Beagle. Oh, there she goes. There's the goose. I couldn't even see the goose. Luckily, she can't catch those geese. They're way too fast for her. Alrighty. I gotta go in and work on a video. Thanks for watching my training videos, everyone. Really appreciate it. Your views help pay for the gas. It was a 142 mile round trip today. Pretty much my average daily trip actually. So thanks for watching. There's more, there always is. Too far away.